oh, what if we work with Arden Cho? What if we work with Arden Cho? What's up, Subtle Asian Traits? I'm here with the stars of Netflix's partner track, the incredible Arden Cho and Desmond Chiam. Guys, welcome. Thank you for jumping on. What's up? Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> what we're going to do today uh, is, of course, we'd love to know more about Partner Track. So I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. I've started watching with my girlfriend and, and it's been, you know, such a, a fun thing to watch. You guys are incredible on there. Um, so yeah, good congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, love. The first question I have for you guys is, I guess, what inspired you each to take on your roles and on your characters? Well, for me, one, there just aren't many shows in general with a Asian American lead, uh, not to mention a female lead. And so I think in the last probably decade or so, I've been quite selective over roles and been careful choosing because just in the world of TV, if you sign on to a project, you are generally committed. After Teen Wolf and after Chicago Med, there were times when there were some opportunities where I could have jumped on another show, but it just didn't feel like the right project at the right time. And I really wanted to do a show that I felt like would be a better representation of Asian Americans mm -hmm. and be purposeful. And for me, when I read Partner Track, it was just like, I couldn't think of a better show. Can I say also that we're like definitely better off for having you lead it because you do need like these opportunities come on very, very rarely, as you said, for people in our community. And you need someone who knows what the hell they're doing. You know, you, you've been doing this. You know what you're doing. You're very, very good at it. So that I think yeah. is so, so key. My, my reason is very similar to yours. I think after Crazy Rich Asians, there was a bit of a renaissance for roles for everyone. But Hollywood being what it is still systemically white, um, and loving to generate lists off of successes like that tended to go dip into the same pool over and over again. So it was actually still pretty slim pickings for a lot of people who were coming up. And a lot of it, when it's slim pickings and they know you're desperate, you don't get the good roles. You still get a lot of that real stereotypical nonsense. So the fact that Z is a well-presented, dignified, strong man who comes through as a, as a, to some degree, a bit of a hero by the end of it, that in four years is the first role I think that came through that was like that. When it comes through, you, when that stuff comes through, you don't question it, you just jump on it. No, and it's so special. Like the world has no idea that we casted Z <laughs> the longest out of any actor on our show. It was, such a, it, was a, it was a very important role. We did a ton of chemistry reads, um, our showrunner, director, producers, everyone, the entire team was super thoughtful in the process because it was so important to find the right Asian leading man. And so- I think I, I came in. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys put cast perfect. the beginning. I can't wait to see <laughs> I know. It have it in store for the Yeah, and they were really careful because they knew future casting, future looking forward, there was a lot more stuff that needed to happen. It's super rare for us to have these characters that are just so well-rounded and big in a sense, Real. right? They're, they're complex characters that are also different from what we see portrayed for Asian Americans. Yeah. You know? It's rare that you have like a leading Asian man who's an eco-warrior, who's also a billionaire, who's also dashing, but isn't like your majority of men who are just like going after the girl. Absolutely. Yeah, I 100% I um, love how kind of it, it paints it with not just an Asian brush, you know, like not just a stereotype of uh, this person's just Asian and these are the characteristics that they'd have as Asian and kind of like it explores so many more like diverse stories that exist in our communities. What, what's something you'd both say that you, I guess, learn from playing your characters? I'm a bit of a class clown. Uh, by nature, you know, I'm, I'm a bit goofy. I'm not, I'm not at all. Z is, Z is a stretch. Z was a big stretch for me acting wise. Cause I'm not, a, I'm not dignified. I'm not serious. And I'm not, uh, well, I like to think I'm ethical, but you You're know, so I'm, small, <laughs> though. <laughs> I'm not unbending, you know what I mean? In the same way that he is. And that I think uh, is something that I took from his character. Like I'd come back from set, you know, every day, just standing a little straighter on you know, you absorb a little bit of every character you play. And I think that's a, that was a nice trait to come back with. Even Sammy, my wife, was like, you're more confident right now. And I'm like, yeah. Well, one, I was 
reminded, I think, just how tough it is as a hardworking, resilient Asian person that the whole model minority myth is really toxic for us in a way. And I think when you're filming it over and over and over, and it's all intentional, like all these scenes, they're so intentional to show the audience what it actually feels like to be in Ingrid's shoes or to be the other, or to be the one that all the work and responsibility gets tossed to while someone else takes the credit. And I realized just how triggering and tough that was sort of being so in it where so often in my life, it would happen and kind of like our our actor April would say in the HR meetings, like, oh, well, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. And I think that was something common in my life of if I experienced racism or microaggressions or, you know, some disrespect quite often, if there was a situation where I could fight for myself, the response was, oh, well, I, it's, I don't want to get anyone in trouble or I don't want to make it a big thing. And you just sort of like brush it under the rug. Mm. And I think after filming this, I like ended this with so much like power in a sense of saying, just wait till that happens again. Oh, you just wait. And it will be so different now. I feel like there's a bit of fearlessness that now I'm, I'm so ready. And then the one thing for sure that I did learn is so much of my life, I've hid my feminine sign because I thought to be taken seriously as a woman, you just have to be so strong. You have to wear black, wear dark colors, be boyish, hide your, your womanness in a way. And I think what I love about Ingrid is as strong as she is, she's still quite feminine. Mm. She wears a lot of these like pastel colors and she's cute and she sort of pops in her style and her fashion and she's not ashamed of that. How much do you guys feel like you had influence, I guess, over the plot and the writing of the show? And- <laughs> I guess, were there any opportunities for you to inform about your culture and have that as part of the, the plot? We're both laughing because we probably feel like, I feel like the world always thinks actors have power. Yeah. But little do they know, we have little like to little to no power. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, what, what an incredible team of writers though. The only thing I think that I really am thankful for that I got to be involved in was anything that was nuanced with the family, um, the Konglish, like I speak a lot of Korean with my mom on the show and they really allowed me to play. They allowed us to improvise a bit there in the way that was the most realistic and relatable. It's the way I talk to my real mom in life. and. The Chuseok dinner scene, which is our Korean Thanksgiving, um, similar to the Harvest Moon Festival, um, the Korean dinner, it was really fun to discuss what kind of dishes should be there, what kind of like rice cakes we should have, um, the noodles, like just all of that, the details. It was really fun to be a bit involved in that. And I appreciated that they cared about those details. You know, I feel like this might be one of the only times in American TV I've seen like a true Korean holiday, like dinner scene, like panning on all the dishes, you know, having a white boy eat some chap and saying like, oh, this is great. You know? That was such a cool environment. You know, Esther, Lena, and I would always be yapping away in Korean. We're like, wait, how fun is this? It feels like we're in Korea. We can like, you know, talk smack in Korean or say whatever <laughs> we want to say. Wait, that's what you were saying on the other side of the boardroom? Yeah, no, it, it, it's for me, look, Z, Z was, I think, well written enough that there wasn't a lot of anything for me to fight about too much. Um, yeah. There were, there were little, little Chinese things, some name stuff that was like, okay, well, which, which, like it, it's written in phoneticized English, which means is it, you know, is it, which right. are the tones for this. And it's really fun because even the last name thing, we were like going back and forth discussions of, is she going to be a Yoon or is she going to be a Yun? And then oh. realizing even in English, like my last name is Cho, but it's actually Jo. And like my best friend's last name is Chung, but it's actually Chung. Uh, you know, Partner Track explores a lot of important concepts and messages. Um, one of them is uh, discrimination in the workplace, especially faced by Asian minorities. Um, so I guess for you guys in your careers, do you feel like there were many parallels between what you faced in the show, like as your characters, 
and in real life, um, in your acting or in any other careers that you, you've had in the past? Yes. Oh, this is a big one. More than we'd like. So much. Yeah. Where do we begin? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 80% of the stuff that I booked was never meant for an Asian guy. And it was a very weird experience then having to sort of fold myself around these weird expectations that were completely alien to someone who's of uh, Asian, Asian Western descent, you know, who, who is Asian but grew up in the Western world. Um, you find yourself in compromising situations that don't feel as bad. And the thing that jumps out to me is, you know, obviously the, the diversity not the diversity gala, but prior that the retreat and all the stuff that goes on, they don't want to spoil anything, but there are those moments where you as a person are asked to compromise for the sake of the endeavor, the sake of the show. And it's so freaking hard. And I, I, I won't even pretend that I didn't fold. I folded every time because there's a director standing there pressuring you. There's a producer standing there pressuring you. And we've all, as Asian people, raised in the Western world, been put in a position where we've been asked to compromise. And we've done it. Let's not pretend that we haven't. I think every single one of us at some point has done that. Like someone has come up and said something like, oh, hey, you're really cool for an Asian. And you're just like, thanks, man. You know, like those moments. Yeah, I mean, that's what's so special about the show is we show those experiences in hopes to enlighten others to say, hey, make a different choice, say something. I can't tell you how many times people have said things to me like, oh, wow, you speak English really well for an Asian, or you're pretty cute for an Asian girl, or like, if you want to act, go to your country. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was born in America. Don't get me started on that. And I think the world is just beginning to learn that there is a difference between being Asian and being Asian American. The world yeah. is learning that there are differences from being Chinese or Korean or Japanese or yeah. Indian. One of the first scenes, um, you know, I guess showed Ingrid being mistaken for a paralegal and, uh, you know, told to get sparkling water. And, um, you know, I, I think that shows a, a big stereotype. And so what I wanted to know for you guys was um, what are some stereotypes that you hope partner track challenges as well as breaks? I think one, definitely the model minority. I think partner track shows that Asians are just as complex and layered as all people. You know, we've got a sister who is like, this feisty, like she's gonna do all these bad things. I don't want to spoil it, but you know, my sister character is so fun and vibrant. And I know a lot of Asian girls like her, but so people don't true. expect to see that or to expect that you've got two brothers and you've got one like this eco warrior all about the environment. And then the other who's like- Rat boy. <laughs> right, like the frat boy, but also like your typical lawyer, but very still different, you know, I mean, the Min brothers could, they could be white, but I love that, obviously that they're Asian. Funnily enough, almost every other set that I've worked that has had a lot of action stuff in it, I have been mistaken for a stuntman every single time. Every single time some PA or, or, or the director, the director will come up to me once and be like, um, hey, so what are, what are the beats for the scene? Like, what do you wanna, what, what are you guys trying to do with the fight? And I'm like, I don't know. You tell me, <laughs> maybe ask the stunt coordinator, I'm, I'm your actor. I guess I want to bring it back a bit earlier in your careers. You know, something that I watched a lot growing up was, um, was YouTube. And because I think there were a lot of uh, Asian role models on YouTube. And of course, I saw you guys um, in, in, in a lot of things with channels such as Wong Fu Productions, um, you know, huge fan of that. And so I guess how much of that do you feel like has contributed to your acting careers now? Well, for me, it's interesting. I feel like YouTube has always been such a special place to create, to connect with other artists. And for me, I was always so encouraged seeing what Wong Fu is doing and what all these creatives are doing online because, you know, as traditional actors, we're just like auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. It's almost like, just like, hammering the nail like over and over and over without any result, but you just keep trying. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, Phil and those guys, you know, Phil and Ryan, they'd be, be like, do YouTube. 
I don't know why you don't just create your own stuff, like do YouTube. But I think as an actor of a more like traditional route, that was so scary and hard and complex. I was like, I mean, how do I write stories? How do I do that? But to see what they did and the platforms that they created, the stories they shared and allowed so many young Asian Americans and Asians to feel seen, seeing Asian leads. I think it showed the world how meaningful it is and how important it is. So I think YouTube was and is so powerful. We can tell our stories, you know? Wong Fu told our stories. They showed Asian girls and Asian boys falling in love, being funny, being silly, like doing all these things. I mean, Asian Bachelorette, like all the stuff, right? There's yeah. so fun things that happened. And I think it started showing the world that Asians are a lot more colorful than they know. Can I, can I tell a story that may embarrass you? <laughs> sure. maybe, maybe Chris. Uh, um, okay. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, me, I'm gonna throw our mutual Chris Pang under the bus here a little bit too. And oh, um, yeah. in terms of the YouTube generation, because we're back in, back in 08, 07, 08, 09, that kind of era when it was all kicking off. That was kind of the renaissance for Asians on YouTube. I feel like all the way up to like 2010, 11, 12 ish, we were watching all that happen from Australia and we were watching all this happen on YouTube and I'll cut a long story short, more or less, we were like, we need to move to the States. And, you know, we'd already decided that we were going to, but it really put the pressure on to be like, we have to go and see what's up. And I just remember this, this, this living room conversation I had with Chris just before we left, we were just thinking of all the people that we, we might meet and work with. And we're sitting with these two little kids in Oz and other rooms going like, oh my God, we're doing it. We're going to go. We're going to go to LA. What if we get to, what if we get to like, ooh, what if we get to work with like Phil and like Wong Fu? We have to like meet Wong Fu and like, you know, get to know him. And then, oh, what if we work with Arden Cho? What if we work with Arden Cho? <laughs> Swear to God, that is a true story. Go to Chris. He'll verify it. I but love it. I love it. That was, and here we are. Full circle. Here we are, full circle. And so, now we're like family. And I like love you guys so much because I feel uh, like uh, we're here doing it. We're working so hard to show the world that Asians are strong, powerful, sexy, inspiring, hardworking. Yeah. We're like all the great things. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it started with YouTube. That was the first real platform that Asians got to say, hey, look at me. Look at me be crazy. I mean, even, even like subtle Asian traits, how exciting that that really blew up too yeah because everybody was like oh i totally i relate to that oh i see that um so yeah i guess a a, a challenge that's commonly faced by a lot of asian inv individuals when choosing i uh, i guess career paths is uh family pressure you know that's very common in our culture and um you know i guess parents asian parents they traditionally want us to go for traditional paths um you know something more stable um you know in a general sense and so I'm wondering for you guys, when you decided to choose acting as your career, um, is that something that your family's approved of or disapproved of, or what was their reaction? Oh, standard Asian reaction, like <laughs> losing it. Like, how could you, why would you, are you okay? Like, no, not at all. I mean, it took nearly two decades, two decades for my family to really come around and be excited and supportive and it's so funny i feel like my mom still worries that i'm gonna end up like homeless and not be able to like take care of myself because in the end it's always this fear of stability right but i'm so thankful because i think with partner track you know it's it's so funny for my mom it was the billboards, like the billboards did it for her, where she was like, oh my gosh, my daughter is on billboards in Hollywood and New York. Like now I think she'll be okay. And it's so funny because, you know, my mom's like, okay, I watched Partner Track three times now, the whole season. And I'm now going to watch it four times. And now I learn all the lines. And I was like, oh my God, mom, I love you so much. Binge Partner Track. Uh, so we get a season two for Arden's mom. Exactly. For my mom, because I really feel like she will be the most devastated if we don't get renewed for season two. <laughs> and then we'll go back to my mom telling me to get a job. <laughs> oh, no. So please. But I, I will say for all of you watching, if you do struggle with, you know, what your parents want for you and pleasing your parents and doing the right thing versus what you want. Look, life is tough. Even if you choose your dream career or the career that is stable or whatever it may be, it's always going to be tough. 
nothing really good is easy, but it's all about the journey. And I promise you, if it is something that you truly believe in, that is something you want to commit in and it brings you joy, just do it. Don't be scared. Resilience and confidence and sureness really does go a long way. And even if it takes you two decades, I promise it's worth it. I listen, same thing, uh, but it didn't take two decades. Fortunately, it just, just took a few years. Um, I, was, I was very tactical with my, with my uh, reveal moment of like, I brought them to set and it was on a day, I was shooting Shannara at the time, which is basically my first role, more or less significant role. And it was elves and, and fantasy and swords and bubblins. Very, very high production value. MTV had splashed out and they built like castles. They built my castle. I had a castle on that show. So on the day that we were shooting in the castle and I knew all my soldiers, my army was going to be there in the throne room. I was like, hey, mom, dad, why don't you come visit set today? <laughs> and uh, I, I let them sit on the throne as well. And that, I think that did it for my dad. He was like, oh, this feels very powerful and serious. Okay, I get it now. And so but it's so cute that your parents enjoyed set. My parents came to set and my mom was like, oh, you film the same thing again? <laughs> it's boring. It's already 15 times same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna, can I go home now? No, I, I love how like your parents ended up being like super supportive. I mean, I similar like story with my parents. Like I, my first kind of thing well, was in, in Shang-Chi, right? And that was like, I was super fortunate for that. I played like a, a martial arts kind of thing. And I think um, after that, my parents or my mom, especially traditionally they, she was like, not against, but I think she was just a bit wary of me diving into this sort of industry, right? As, as Asian parents are. And then, but now they're signed up with agents. My mom's like doing shoots, like two shoots a week, like on TV season things. Like she, she loves it. Ew. And Man, even my dad. So cool. Get a mama yeah. Fun. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Like even my dad's like, he's traditionally, he's like a, an accountant. He's like a traditional, like straight um, arrowed accountant. And so, and he was like doing a stand-in role like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's like pretty cool. So like, they've like, they love it now. So they're like full in. Dude, I love now. this. I love That's hearing. Right. These stories about progressive Asians. Oh no, are we frozen? <laughs> this is Matt, he's like. He invoked the name of his parents and it all went bad from that. <laughs> Sorry, my oh, battery just died. Oh. Yeah, I, well, the last question that I have uh, for you guys, you know, we're gonna have a, a large Asian audience watching this, you know, subtle Asian trades watching this. And so I guess what's something you'd like the Asian audience to learn from watching Partner Track? Well, one, I hope you feel seen. I hope that you see Partner Track as a place where it's at least a start for some of our stories to be told. And I hope that it can continue to grow and that we get to see more of these Asian American stories being told. I mean, season one is really just a setup of what Ingrid Young's life looks like, but it really is just the beginning. But I hope that People feel seen. And so far, this has been the most incredible journey and response. I mean, you know, to be the number two most show watched globally, to hit number one in so many countries and to have all these men and women write me letters telling me how similar their experience has been to Ingrid's has been just so heartwarming. I hope we just get to continue telling the story. I hope that it's a conversation starter with your friends and your communities to say, hey, look at us, we're here. We are not invisible. We are definitely belonging. And I hope it's empowering. Empowering, I think, is the key word um, for what I'd love, love people to learn. I hope that our community learns that no matter where you are in your um, search for identity, to use that phrase again, as someone who straddles two worlds, you know, Asian person born and raised in, in Western society of a different ethnicity, wherever you are in your journey of coming to a place of grace for that is okay. You know, if, if you're just now entering the workforce and are getting slammed left, right and center, by the system and all the systemic prejudices that you have to face, don't feel like you need to be Mike Tyson immediately. You know what I mean? Like find your footing first. Or if you've been doing this for a while, or if you're like, you know, part of the community that is deciding to repatriate themselves into their like 
ethnic homeland, wherever you are on that journey is fine. Let it be a journey. Let yourself come to realizations as they come. Give yourself grace for it and give everyone around you grace for the different parts of the journey that they're on also. Thank you so much for sharing that, guys. And thank you for your time. I really appreciate you jumping on. Um, yeah, that was amazing. Watch your partner track. Series, series uh, one. It. Let's go. one to ten. Thank Netflix you tracks you completion. Me. So uh, so finish it off. Seriously, please watch the show. Tell yes. your friends, your family, everyone you know, walk around the streets. Tell people to watch Partner Track because this is how we keep getting Asian stories. Yep. Right. How we get to continue telling them. And so yeah. just the start, hopefully, to a, a long, long journey. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Matt. <laughs>